Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the um, webinar on the STM contaminated land system. Um, hopefully, you can all hear me. Um, we're still waiting for a few people to, to join the webinar. Um, it's not quite 11 o'clock yet. Um, so we're just going to give, uh, give, give people a few more minutes, hopefully, to join in. And uh, we'll get started. I'll, I'll come back to you uh, very shortly. Hi, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the STM uh, webinar um, on contaminated land data management. Um, my name is Simon McConey. Um, I am the director of uh, STM Environmental. Um, I'm an environmental engineer. Um, my background is uh, I, I started off uh, my career working in local government as a, as a pollution control officer um, with a special focus on contaminated land. Then I left local government uh, to join consultancy and um, got involved in, in data management and uh, GIS and, uh, and, and helped, um, you know, sort of getting in, in, in contact with local authorities and helped them, um, quite a number of authorities now, um, sort of uh, move their contaminated land strategies forward uh, using our software. Um, so the subject of this seminar is, is contaminated land data management, risk assessment, mapping, analysis, and reporting. There's a lot of um, sort of areas to cover. Uh, we've only got an hour to, to go through it. Um, so I'll just get started without any further ado. Um, introduction to uh, an overview of the presentation. I've talked a little bit about who we are. Uh, I'll just go into that a little bit more and then go into an overview of the, the actual system and um, prioritization and, and report writing as well. Um, we're, we're a small company based in, in southwest London um, and Areas of you know the main areas we focus on uh, software development, environmental software, uh, data management, risk assessment, and modeling. And um, we we also now undertake a you know sort of phase one, phase two desktop studies, risk assessments, um, the whole the whole the whole lot. Um, we you know we do that for for public sector as well as private sector uh, organisations. Um, so so very uh, very. Um, Interested to hear from you if you have any any needs there, whether it's support, you know, sort of peer reviewing reports, consultations, that kind of thing, or if you actually have, you know, some investigations that you need doing. And we've also got an environmental permits module, um, which uh, which is steadily um, sort of growing in uh, user base. Um, and we also do um, environmental management systems. 
as I say, just an overview there. Um, we're working currently with over 80 local authorities across the UK, mostly um, in the area of contaminated land. Um, the map on the on the right hand side just gives you a brief idea of um, the location of those those authorities. Uh, you know, some are large, some are small. We've got uh, you know sort of a variety of different installations. Such some are one or two users, and others are sort of five six users um, in in some of the larger areas. As well as that, our software um, has also been used in other parts of the world. Uh, in Denmark, for example, which is where our main partner that we develop the software with um, come from. 95% of all the local authorities use the system there, and the Danish Environmental Protection Agency use the environmental permits module for, for managing all their permits over there. So it's a, it's a tried and tested system, and um, um, yeah, it's sort of very successful throughout many parts of the world. Um, Why choose STM? Um, we've got a proven track of dealing with working with local authorities. That, that's what we do. That's the core of our business. Um, basically, your success is our success. Uh, working, um, you know, we've got we, we small company, so word of mouth is extremely important to us. And uh, um, so we, you know, the customer service we try and provide is uh, hopefully second to none. Um, most importantly, we're trying to build relationships with our clients. Um, most of our Local authority clients have been with us for, for for well over ten years, so so they're you know proud to say that, and um, you know um, work continuously work hard on that. Um, now let's just get into into the software. What what, what is GeoEnviron? Um, GeoEnviron is one of our sort of core parts of the STM contaminated land system. It's a data environmental data management system, which essentially um, sort of manages all the information about your, your potential contaminated land sites. Um, it's, it's essentially a relational database, and uh, but the, you know, the, the unique thing about it is that it's been designed for environmental data. Um, so for those of you who have a little bit of technical knowledge, uh, it's an SQL, a Microsoft SQL Server database, um, and basically the, 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 the interfaces are designed to manage information on contaminated land, environmental permits, private water supplies, and, and various other things. Um, and our systems uh, sort of integrate to uh, a number of different GIS systems. So, um, so that's uh, so very flexible in terms of uh, the type of GIS you can integrate to. Um, it's a client server system, so rather than the, uh, typical access database or an Excel spreadsheet, if you're using Excel spreadsheets where you know, you can only access that information um, and and, uh, and sort of write to, to that data on on a single machine. This is a this is a client server system, so it can be set up on a server, and multiple users can can edit and um, and access information. We we actually have a you know in, in Denmark, we Copenhagen Council have a 300 user license there, so that's the kind of scale that you can you can go up to. Um, you know, most as I say, most of the installations we have in the UK are sort of you know, one to one to five users. Um, okay, so that um, that that's kind of introduction to to the software. I'll come back to risk assessment um, a little bit later. So what we'll do, we'll just go into the actual software, um, and I'll start off uh, and introduce you to to the database. Um, you know, this webinar is kind of um, aimed primarily at those authorities that um, still haven't managed to, to really uh, get a, a grip on, on, on their data uh, in terms of contaminated land sites and, um, and, and prioritize their data. Now, it may be you know, that you're, you know, you've, you've joined the authority recently and you're, you're picking up someone else's work and maybe that person you know, sort of understood exactly, um, you know, had to develop their own little method that, of, of managing information and um, but maybe that doesn't necessarily translate across very easily to, to new people when they're coming across um, and they're the types of um, sort of typical users that or new, new authorities new clients that we're picking up um, or you might be in the situation where you've um, you know you've, you've You've got a prioritization system that was done maybe you know ten years ago or whatever and hasn't been updated since, and you're looking to update the prioritization system. Um, 
you know, there may, may be a number of reasons. Uh, um, you, you know, recently we picked up an authority that uh, that actually um, had they lost their contaminated land officer, and there was a big gap. I think of a few years, um, and um, and um, they actually had have no data. They've got no information on contaminated land, and uh, I don't know how they managed to survive. Uh, sort of uh, three, four years without any information in terms of planning cons consultations and things. But, uh, but, um, but yeah, we're having to, to essentially build up their database for them of information and, uh, and get them back on track. So, so I'm going to, this, this, so this demo is going to be fairly, um, fairly sort of basic and, um, you know, not, not too involved, but, uh, hopefully just go through the, um, the basics of setting up a database and prioritizing your sites and being able to, to, to respond to consultations efficiently and effectively. Okay, so the first, first component of that is um, a, um, uh, a database management system. Um, by the way, um, we're, I, I'm going to, I should have said this earlier, but uh, we're, we're going to have a for the most part, the session is going to be muted. But if you have any questions as I'm going along, by by all means, uh, you've got a question option at the bottom of uh, the, the control panel where you can you can type in your questions, and I'll you know we'll, we'll keep an eye on those and try and answer them as we're going along. Right. So um, so logging onto the database, um, you basically you got two options. You can you can log on with Windows or you can use a uh, um, username and password. So, um, so that takes me into into the system, and um, this is what we call the start page. And if I um, um, there's a number of options here, different modules I can I can um, I can view uh, active cases. So, so these are cases that I've got ongoing. Uh, there might be planning applications. There might be um, um, you know environmental searches and things that, that need to be uh, carried out. Um, so, so you get you get an officer diary, in other words, which which is incredibly useful. It just gives you a uh, an overview of your your current workload, um, and you can you know you can break that down by case officer, um, or if you're a manager, you can you can view all the incoming cases that you've got going on. Um, there is also a dashboard associated with this. Um, and uh, again, there you can, um, you know, if you want to, you want to see some graphics in terms of the data, you can do that as well. Um, but essentially, um, for uh, contaminated land, we have two two modules. Um, one that we call the contaminated land investigation submodule, and that's the module that manages all the Part 2A, potential Part 2A site data. And then we have a, a module that we call case management, contaminated land case management, which manages uh, sort of the, the reactive workflows. So, so that's your planning consultations, your environmental inquiries, um, and the like. So what I'll do, I'll go into the um, Part 2A submodule first. So if I just double click on that, that, that opens up. That, that module there. And so you're seeing um, the, the full system in terms of the part 2A module there. Um, I'll retrieve a little bit of data just to just to make it look a bit realistic. So that's one of the first things is that, you know, compared to an Excel spreadsheet, your database is searchable. So so you can you can hit the retrieve button and if you want without typing any information in and you get a list of all the, the potential contaminated land sites that you've got recorded in your database. By the way, this is this is a demonstration database purely for demonstration purposes. So any information in there is, you know, purely uh, um, fictional and uh, won't necessarily make sense. So just just bear that in mind. Um, so I'm just bringing up, uh, I'm going to bring up my favorite site here, which is Bellens Metalworks. So once I um, double click on that, that site becomes the active site. And we can then view all the information associated with it. So, so we've got a site called Bellum's Metal Works. We've got the location information, and here we've got some some basic information in terms of the planning status, whether it's been remediated, um, whether it's a special site. Now, a lot of these uh, fields you can customize so that you know, rather than it saying remediation status, you can you can have that, you know. Um, Give you, um, you can use that field for any other purpose, um, and where the, where you know where you've got fields with buttons associated with the 
with the field. It means that you can click a box, you can click a, the button and, and bring up a list of options um, that you can enter into the field. So they're what we call validated fields. So this, this just helps keep your data consistent and, um, you know, um, which means you can, you can search on those fields consistently and eff efficiently. So, you know, if I wanted to find um, all the sites that had been um, remediated under planning, for example, I could um, just put that as my search criteria and hit retrieve and, and we've got two records in this test database. Okay, so, um, so that's, again, that's another benefit of, of having your data in, in a database and having it searchable. Um, I'll just bring back my, my favorite site, which was Bellum's. So here I'll do a search and that brings up uh, the record. Now, so what we've, we've got is in the top section, we've got the key information about the site. And also in the bottom right-hand corner, as you see there, we've got some risk scores. So, so, so the system's risk assessed this, um, this site as well. And we can see that, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a category four according to this. Um, and these are scores in terms of human health um, risk. And uh, this 13 relates to, to, to the combined risk um, from, you know, of, of human health, ecology, surface water and groundwater. Um, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. Um, but what we'll see here as well is the history of the site. So we've got the site use history tab here and we can see that this site has been a, a, an electroplating works from 1967 to 1978. But what we can see here is that we've got three pages of information here so I can scroll down and I can see that actually it was also a garage filling station um, from 1950 and previous to that it was an asbestos manufacturing work. So pretty nasty uh, site here. Um, one of the nice things you can do with the system as well, uh, built into the system, you've got the industry profiles, the, 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 the former DOE, Department of Environment, uh, wonderful industry profiles. We've scanned all of those in and uh, essentially you've got that information readily available as soon as you attach a, um, a profile to a site. Um, and again, this, this is a code field, so it means you can click the button and you can assign any industry profile you want to, um, to the site. And typically what we try and do is, you know, each and every site gets hopefully a, a DOE profile. If it doesn't fit into one of those profiles, then, then we'll, you, can, you can create custom profiles to suit your needs. Okay. Um, as well as that, um, these will also you can actually also link directly to to the in individual profile as well if you if you if you actually want all the detailed information on that particular uh, industrial use. Okay, so that's that's useful um, um, sort of data in in the site history. You know, the the the, the part three module tries to kind of look at the whole um, the whole life cycle of a site. So. So you have uh, the site inspection. So when you go out and you do your inspections, your walkovers, the information that you gather can be stored into the system as well. Um, and your information on geology, made ground, if you've got abandoned materials and storage tanks on the site, um, all of that information can be captured and stored. So you're building up a picture of your site. Um, You've got, you've got facilities for storing information such as desktop studies and remediation site investigation reports. Um, so all your document management um, can, can also uh, be handled. So essentially it's just a link to a document which you can click on. And um, as I say, don't worry too much about the actual content here. This, this is just a demonstration, but um, you've got all your, as I say, you can link to as many documents as you want. There are, there are no limits. Um, so this, this, this tab is very useful for, as I say, just all the milestone events that occur on the site um, and gives you one port, one, 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 um, one port of call for that, for that type of information. The next two tabs are to do with the risk assessment. So we've got 
what we call the stage one risk and, and the stage two risk assessment. So there's two levels of risk assessments. Most people just, just stick with the one level, but there is a second level if, um, if you want to go into that. And I'll, I'll as I say I'll come back to that uh, a little bit later. Um, if your site happens to be a waste disposal, you can, you can record pretty much every, every sort of key bit of information about it. Um, protection zones, this just tells us um, a little bit about um, the potential receptors and, and is, is again a part of the risk prioritization system which I'll come back to. Um, then we have a, 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 a number of other tabs uh, under the other references here where, where you know, we can relate sites to each other. So if you, you happen to have two sites possibly owned by the same, the same company or have some kind of relationship between them, um, you can you can link them to each other. And similarly, um, if you've if you've got the survey module, which is a site investigation module, which allows you to basically store information on um, on on site investigations, and, and and you know this 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 would include things like sample data, sample analysis results, and um, uh, borehole logs, and, and various other things, which uh, um, um, you know, it's obviously quite a, 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 a significant level of detail there, um, which which not 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 all not not all the local authorities actually need. But um, but that is available if if uh, if that was uh, something you wanted you were interested in. Um, we've got document li links. This is similar to what I showed you just a little bit early on the site events. What this is is just basically a um, um, a. a sort of document management system and you can link as many um, documents to that and simply linking a document is all that all that involves is navigating to to your document um, let's see if I can find some example documents here somewhere um, so navigating to your document there and and attaching your document and what happens is you get you get the path to the document in there, uh, and you can then um, describe the document. So, so, so essentially, yeah, you, you, you're sort of linking all your information, your key information, to your record. So you have this one port of call when, when you know, when somebody rings up with an inquiry or, or whatever, and, and you need to, um, you know, you, you want you want to find out some information. Um, Contacts. So, if you happen to know who the relevant persons were, you can you can record that information. Or if there's consultants associated with the with the site investigations, etc. Um, budgeting as well. Um, a number of authorities have used the, the the budgeting system to to account for for funding that that they've they've received and in site invest you know for site investigations they've undertaken. So you've got you've got the uh, you know and that's transparency and. Uh, um, um, I think accountability that DEFRA, you know, when 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 they had some funding um, available, uh, were very uh, very keen on. Um, you you can use that for a number of other things as well. Um, so if you're if you're doing environmental searches and things like that as well, you can you can keep financial records there as well. Uh, cost accounting. Um, Number of authorities uh, that's quite important for them in terms of what, what cost accounting allows you to do is um, any uh, time that you're spending on on uh, on you know investigating sites or even planning consultations etc. You can log that within the system and it will and it will create, keep a running total of the number of hours um, each officer is using and uh, and uh, you know if you if you then need to justify that back to management or, or to or to um, you know DEFRA or somebody, you know you, you can do that. So essentially, that's um, that's that's a that's a very quick run through the system. Um, now, a key thing obviously is um, this this all obviously needs to link into GIS. And so what I'll do, I'll just bring up um, the GIS here, um, and as you'll see. Um, that's already centered on the site that I was looking at. So that's one of the things um, that the system does is it links automatically to GIS. So whenever you bring up a record uh, in the database, so let's just, uh, let's say Abbotsbury there close, you can see that zooms to that location in the map. Um, 
so that saves you essentially having to you know sort of try and find try and find sites it, you know the the, the the GIS automatically reacts to the um, to the database um, just to mention uh, in terms of GIS as, as you saw in the PowerPoint earlier we, we do cater for a number of different GIS's the, 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 the idea is the same when when you um, when when you bring up a record in the database, it automatically takes you to that site in the GIS. And similarly, if you're in the GIS um, and you're looking at some a, a, a specific site and you want to bring up the information for that for that site um, in the database, you can click on the site record. Um, it brings up the, uh, some key, some basic information in the in the GIS, but then if you want to go to the database, you just click on the button, and it then it gives you all the uh, the detailed information about the site there. Um, you know, you can you can do you can do sort of um, uh, buffer searches as well, and um, that will bring up the the key key bits of information. And if you want at this point, then you can. You can bring up the information in the database, so that's, that's that saves saves a lot of time and a lot of um, sort of effort um, in you know just just being able to analyze the data um, efficiently and quickly there. Um, so with the GIS, the the, the way the, it's it's linked right through and it's very sort of seamless, very. Um, very simple so let's say for example I want to create a new uh, PCL site here um, we've got the tools in the GIS that allow you to just basically plot your your site boundary there so let's say for example this was a previous uh, railway depot or something um, so I can go in here and I can say you know there's various ways I can create this record um, I'm going to use the advanced creation option here, so I click uh, on there. So this this gives me a kind of a mini uh, database uh, view, so I can go railway depot, uh, put in the the, the 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 basic information I I I want to on there. So let's say um, let's just say uh, and off Longford River. Um, and if I want to fill, fill out some some information about risk assessment, this, this probably is uh, it's probably a good uh, time to, to to go into this. So um, so we've got this site. If we happen to know this information while we're plotting the site, we can, we can populate the risk assessment table. So so this is um, this is former railway land. So let's just say okay, this railway land. Um, what's the current use of this site? Uh, the current use is it's still railway land so let's let's leave it as industrial um, so that goes in there you know at this point if we know we, we know we've got our maybe information on on our groundwater receptors whether it's in an SPZ or groundwater vulnerability layers and so on we can populate the database with that information so so let's say it's um, it's in and out of protection total catchment zone for example um, do we have surface water yes we have surface water actually uh, just just next to the site so um, so we'll say we've got surface water within 50 meters um, do we have any ecological protection zones in the area uh, doesn't appear to be uh, so we'll say no ecological property receptors there okay and that will update the database with with information necessary to, to prioritize that site um, if I wanted to if I wanted to arrange a, an inspection a, a site walkover or something for this site I could fill out these these details here but I'll leave that for now and I hit OK on there and so it's basically said this, it's created the, the record in GeoEnviron do I want to see the record yes click the button and there's there's the data in the, in the database and we've got all the information we entered we've got the current use we've got the the, the, the historical or the potentially contaminative land use. Um, we've got the information about the protection zones, as we call them, surface water, groundwater, and uh, and ecological receptors. Um, so all of that that information is sufficient to allow it to do a prioritization. So if we just go in, have a look at the stage one 
risk tab here. So what we see is um, essentially we've got a human health score, a groundwater score, and a, and a surface water score. And these are these are the scores here. So essentially, the, the, if if this is probably a good uh, good point at which to go into a bit more detail about the prioritisation, um, and I'll just switch back over to my to my um, PowerPoint presentation here, uh, just to give you the background on this, that, that there is a methodology behind this. Um, now, what is risk assessment? Basically, it's just the basic process of assessing whether you've got an environmental hazard at the site, what, what receptors are likely to be affected by the hazard, um, and the chances that they will be affected. And then eventually the, the end game is that you, know, you need to, to, to assess what you need to do to minimize those chances. Okay, so, so that's what we're doing here. And essentially, by putting in the potential contaminants of land use into the system, we're assessing the presence of an environmental hazard. By, by putting in the information about the current use of the site, um, the protection zones, the ecological groundwater and surface water receptors, we're identifying the receptors and, um, and, and the systems then calculating the risk score, which gives us a, an idea of the, the chances that the receptors are going to be affected by the hazard. And that's all in line with, um, <clears throat> with, with, with part 2A, um, which essentially talks about this significant pollutant linkage um, and contaminant recept receptor pathway. Um, and just to clarify though, we, we are really looking at tier one of the process here. Um, so essentially risk screening. Um, we're, not, we're not going into doing any uh, quantitative risk assessment. It's, it's, it's just tier one risk screening. This, this allows us to essentially look at a number of sites that we've got in our in our uh, area and, and, and prioritize them so we we can then decide which sites we need to go need to go forward into a tier two generic quantitative risk assessment okay um, so that's very important um, so the prioritization methodology as, as I mentioned earlier it's a two-stage process um, although most a lot of authorities uh, you know, happy just just to stick to the one stage uh, that does the trick. Um, essentially, stage one involves gathering as much information as you can about your sites. Essentially, doing death studies on them, um, and as you saw, we, we we essentially put in the hazards and the sensitivity and the receptors and behind the scenes that the. the the systems allocating sensitivity scores to, to, to the information we're putting in. Um, and based on that, it essentially just calculates a, a stage one risk score. So a very simple algorithm, uh, a profile hazard score times a receptor sensitivity score gives you the stage one risk score. So nice and easy, nice and transparent. Um, and that gives us the stage one priority listing. Now, if we were lucky enough and DEFRA still had some funding, you would then look at that prioritization listing and decide which which of those sites you need to, to get out and start doing investigations on. And that's where the stage two would come in. And essentially, that gives you, you, you would then go out and do some site walkovers and limited sampling, that kind of thing, plug that information back into the system, and the system would then um, give you an action prioritization program. Okay, so so that would actually so your your high your, your so your high risk sites from your stage one, you subject them to to, to walkovers and sampling, um, and based on on the results of that, you'd have an action program for 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 full intrusive investigations. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. Um, I'll just skip uh, these slides. Um, it's just uh, essentially to show you that. Again, as I say earlier, there, there is a clear methodology behind it. Um, with the stage two, is looking through um, a lot of factors such as you know toxicity and mobility, um, uh, <clears throat> and inhalation-related hazards. Uh, th this this um, this little flowchart is just giving you an idea of how it uh, the stage two process um, looks at the exposure assessment and the pathways. Um, so you have the source, 
you know, at this point in in the exposure assessment, we're looking at the individual contaminants and you know whether how you know what kind of properties they have, whether they're volatile, non-volatile, um, where they're located in in the soil horizon, um, and the sensitivity of the current land use as well. So all of these factors kind of combine together to give you either a medium, high, or low priority score for your site. Um, as I say, I'm not going to go into this into too much detail as, as we, we, we have a limited amount of time, but I'm happy to, 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 to conference again with, um, with, with anyone who is, you know, is interested in the detail. We do have a document that, uh, that goes through this. Um, and landfill gas as well is, is able to, to, to give you a landfill, you know, if you've got a, a, number, a lot of waste landfills in your area, um, you can prioritize them based on landfill gas associated risks as well. Um, so there's a little methodology there as well for that. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're interested in, um, in groundwater um, in your area particularly, um, again, size can be prioritized specifically in terms of the groundwater receptor and surface waters as, as well. Okay, so um, so I'll just come back to that. So essentially that prioritization methodology has been implemented into, into GeoEnviron here. And as you saw, we entered in the hazard, um, which is the former uses railway land. And if I go into the back tables, what you'll see is Railway, railway land has some hazard scores associated with it. Um, and so, so when we associate the profile with the site, those hazard scores get associated with the site as well. Um, and similarly, when we're inputting the information about the current use, we're actually allocating a receptor score, a receptor sensitivity score to the site as well. So in this case, um, the current use is an industrial, um, so that has a low human health score. Um, if you want to, if you want to see what what's a high human health score, that would be uses such as allotments or residential housing with gardens. They're, they they would be high scores. Um, I'll just resort this table so you can see it in descending order of sensitivity. Um, so when we're when we're allocating a, a current use to a site, we're actually allocating a sensitivity, a land use, or a human health sensitivity score to that site. Okay, and uh, similarly, when we're inputting the information on um, surface water receptors, uh, groundwater receptors, and ecological receptors, we're, we're, we're again allocating sensitivity scores. Um, to the site. So this is, this is how the system works. It's, um, it's, it's basically just managing data um, and pulling all of that data together for you. Um, so, and, and you know one of the one of the um, one of the good things about this is, as I said earlier, it's a simple algorithm, so it's very transparent. Um, um, I think in the early days when we started out, you know, the, we, we, there was a there was quite a number of different prioritization systems out there, and most of them were kind of what we call black box uh, type prioritization systems, which uh, basically went went off into the GIS and did a lot of number crunching. Um, came back a couple of days later, and then you have a you know by magic a prioritization list, but it was very difficult to actually get into into the prioritization list and understand how it had been generated. With this system, everything's totally transparent and you can you can actually see uh, it's, it's easy to understand how a, how a site gets gets a score that it, it gets. Um, so obviously what's interesting here is what uh, not you know we, We've, we've got some prioritization scores for the individual site. We, we want to know where does that site lie in our prioritization list of all sites. So here I can uh, go to my report. And there's a number of prioritization uh, reports available in the system. So here, this is a human health one I'm, I'm, I'm generating. So I can just hit the button there and instantly uh, you get your prioritization list. Um, again, this is another key difference between our system and, um, and previous uh, competition in that 
you know, you when when you um when you generate the prioritization, it's it's it's, it's pretty instantaneous again because it's in a database management system um, so here we have as you can see engineering works with the residential housing with gardens uh, human health use on on the site gas works so so as you can see pretty pretty uh, pretty uh, not not too many surprises in, t in terms of what's at the top if you want to go down to the bottom of the list yeah, we've got some nasty chemical works and things, but but they're not um, they're they're not necessarily uh, um, um, on human health on sensitive human health sites. If we look at this one, for example, yeah, we've got a chemical works, but it's actually on a and it's actually on a human health residential housing with gardens. But the the reason it's at the bottom is is because we've got another factor score here. So it's been multiplied by 0.14. So let's go and have a look at that. So if I click on this little button here, it takes me to that site, and I can see the site in the map as well. Um, but what's happened here is we have, um, under the other factors here, we've actually, um, there's been an intrusive site investigation, and, and it's been found not to be contaminated. Um, and um, and so, so those scores have essentially um, brought down the score for that for that entire site. Now, the other factors, again, they're 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 optional. That's optional information that you can put in. Um, so you, you you know we've got a list of standard other factors. And this is this is this is all about keeping your prioritization up to date. Um, I mentioned at the start of this webinar that I think a number. Of, I think the majority of authorities will be in a position where they they'll have a prioritization which uh, was done a number of years ago and um, hasn't been updated since now obviously a lot of sites have gone through planning they've gone through um, they've been investigated and uh, that information needs to be taken into account in in the prioritization and this is how we we deal with that with that issue um, so essentially when whenever you get a, a site Investigated or, or remediated, you can go in and and and, um, and and put that other factor information into into the system, and that will that will um, automatically um, adjust the prioritization score. And the, you know, you, you again because of transparency and, and flexibility, you're able to go in and, and set those scores up yourselves, if you know, and um, and determine how how you know how much. Or you know how how much you know sort of um, should be added to the you know how much the the score should increase or decrease um, depending on 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 your you know your your views and preferences. Essentially, the system it's, it's not a black box system that that basically just churns out a score for you. It it really is a system that you know you 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 want to be looking at that list. It facilitates you know your you know, your 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 ability to, to to undertake the risk assessment. So when you're looking at that list, that should reflect you know what you're thinking in terms of uh, the sites that you've got in your area. If it doesn't, you know you can easily go in and 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 uh, and, and adjust factors in in the system. So let's say for example, just to take um, just to take a, an example there. For example, uh, animal products, animal and animal products processing has come up. Um, we've got we've got an animal products and processing on an allotment, so that's come up near the top of the list. Uh, sorry, down the bottom of the list here. Let's say, for example, I I wanted. Um, well, I should probably go to the top of the list and maybe take take an example that's near the top. Um, so let's say, for example, I wanted mechanical engineering works to not be rated as high as they are. Um, I could go into the mechanical engineering works profile um, and say, okay, instead of this being a very high risk, I want this to be a just a high risk. Um, and, this, and once I've done this in the base tables, that will automatically take effect and, and all the sites that have that have that profile assigned to them will 
will be affected immediately. Um, so you can see that's now changed from a six to a five um, on all the mechanical engineering works. So, so that's how you can adjust the, the priority listing so that you know, it suits, you know, it matches up to, to how you see things. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, there is a stage two to this as well, which, um, which goes into more detail. So once you've got your stage one prioritization set up, you can, you can go into a stage two, um, which uh, looks at individual contaminants and um, sort of more explicit uh, considers groundwater, surface water, landfill gas risks. I won't go into that uh, now because we haven't got the time. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you was the reporting. Uh, the, the title of the webinar is called um, uh, Contaminated Land Data Management uh, Risk Assessment and Reporting. Um, what we've um, done as well over the years is um, created a, uh, a reporting tool because we you know, re realize that basically um, most contaminated land officers um, have a lot of data that they need to deal with and, uh, and a lot of that data is, is, is best um, sort of visualized and assessed in a, in a GIS. Um, so, so the MAPI or reporting uh, report rider um, allows you to, to essentially create reports directly from, from your GIS. Um, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll switch over a little, hopefully if we have a little bit of time left, I'll just show you how it works in ArcGIS as well. But here we've, we've, we've got what we call, this is a MapX um, based GIS, which uh, is, is, is a MapInfo product. So those of you that use MapInfo, this is, this is the system you would be, you'd be using. Um, so let's say, for example, we want to do a search in, in, in and around this busy area over here. Um, somebody's either for a planning application or it could be, um, you know, your, um, somebody's putting in an environmental search. Um, whatever the reason, you, you need to know what, what there is at this location. So I've just digitized the site boundary and uh, the, map, the report writer goes away and I've pre-programmed it, told it to search through all these layers that I've got here um, and you know different distances for different things okay so um, which is a typical sort of scenario um, and it's telling me that it's found um, features on, on all of these layers here but it hasn't found anything on the layers down here so at this point I can say well yes I do want to search um, so um, a search report um, so here I can I can then if I've got a template, if I'm using a template, um, let's say, for example, this is a um, this is to do with a planning consultation, and I have a, a planning officer in my database. So this is going into GeoVirum, pulling out information from from the database in terms of contacts. So I've got the, the planning officer who's who's referred this case to me, and um, I can also uh, go into the database if I want and um, get a list of all the addresses in the district select the address that I'm, I'm interested in and plug that into my, into my report. Okay, so, so we've got a, a, a consultation from Jane Marsden and, and it's, uh, it's, um, it's for, for this property here. So um, I then basically say, yeah, produce the report and um, what happens, it goes into, into a Word template, uh, which you can adjust with your logos and uh, and everything, um, and basically starts to produce the report for me. Um, so, so it's just it's just working away there, giving giving me a summary report, which uh, essentially just gives me a list of all the layers and uh, the, the distances that have been searched, and whether or not uh, features were identified. Okay, so it's regardless of what layers you've got in your GIS, um, the system will, will, will be able to search on them. Okay, so, so that's finished what we call the, the summary report. And I can then say, well, I want a detailed report. And um, what it does there is basically go through into each and every uh, layer where it's identified um, features and, um, and, and, and give me uh, a breakdown of uh, what, what, what it's uh, selected on each of the layers. OK, 
Okay. Um, We've also got it here going into the database and pulling through some information from the database, um, which is probably a, a little bit too much information, <laughs> but uh, um, you can do that. The report writer can go in and essentially bring through information from, from the GeoEnviron database um, as it's running. So while, while, that's, while that's running away, I'm just going to, as the time is, uh, is getting on, I'm just going to uh, um, switch over to, to, a, to a, an actual database so you can see um, the sort of things, how, how, how a real database would look uh, rather than the demonstration one I, I was showing earlier. Um, so I'm just going to log into this database here. Um, Although this data is is old, it's, it's, it's out of date. It, it is a, it is an actual database um, that that we've used for for an authority helping them uh, with, with their contaminated land work. Um, so this is an an example of um, an environmental inquiry inquiry that's come through. So um, an environmental search inquiry, and that's that's been set up in here. Um, and Sorry, that's that's just finished now. Um, so there's there's the report. Um, as you can see, quite quite a quite a lengthy report with lots of uh, lots of information on it. Um, that's all been uh, done automatically. Um, so if we come back to the report writer, so that's finished the report. Um, I have the option as well of, um, so it's generated the PDF for me as well. Um, now if I wanted, I could update the database with this information. So if I just go back in here, and as you saw earlier, I can now create a, a record within, within the database. Um, Let's say this was a planning consultation. So I've done my my search of the area, of, and that's created a planning consultation polygon in my map. Um, I can then um, create the actual case in the database. So here I have. Uh, let's just have a look here. There's my planning uh, comments there. Um, so you just need to make sure the, the bits in red are filled out. And um, there's the planning officer that, that, that sent me the consultation. So once I've got all those bits filled out, I can click OK. And basically says, yes, the site's been created in GeoEnviron. Do you want to view the record? Yes. So there's, um, I've got the, uh, the, the other database, which I opened up earlier. Let me just shut that down. Um, so where's that other record there? Um, da, 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 da. I think this was a site here actually so if I just click on that now and click look up there so there, there we are there's so we get the information there um, and it's essentially yeah you can you can run your, your searches and update the the database at the same time um, now, I was in the middle of trying to show you how a, uh, a real database looks, what a real, real database looks, and, uh, and hopefully give you an idea of how the integration works with ArcView for those of you that, that use ArcView. So I'm just going to shut that down um, and open up this database again. Um, so as I said, this is your officer diary that gives you um, a list of all the active cases that you've got ongoing. Um, and here I've, I've got the ArcView um, GIS open. Um, now, so if I want to go to this location, I can hit this button here and, and basically ArcView automatically zooms to that location for me. Um, And if we if we zoom out a little bit here, what we should see is um, this is a little going to be a little bit slower because it's using web mapping services. 
So, uh, and obviously being on the on the on the webinar, it's going to uh, be a, a little bit uh, bit slower. But essentially, uh, if we zoom out a little bit more, what what we've been doing on this database is obviously we've got all the potential contaminated land sites all plotted. Um, you you have we plot each and every site investigation report. That, um, that comes through into, into, into the authority for a planning consultation. So immediately when we're looking at a site, we can see whether or not there's been a, um, a site investigation. So that's the brown polygons. The green polygons are planning applications. Um, so whenever you're looking at a site, you can immediately see um, you know, whether there's been a planning application next door. So if we were to zoom in again um, over here, let's say, um, so here you can see there's been quite a number of planning apps. So if I want to, for example, um, look look up one of these, I can just click on the button there, click Geovi look up, and that brings up that information about that planning application. You know, I've got all my documents, uh, emails, memos, all of that. Uh, linked into the into the case, and uh, um, similarly, if, you know, there's been a site investigation here. Um, actually, I just need to switch over to the um, uh, da -da -da, searches. Where we, we've got some searches here. Um, let's say we've got a part two A site here. We want to bring that up. Click on that. And that tells us, well, we've got a cemetery and a graveyard at that location. What have we got here? Um, brewing and malting. So, so that's the sort of um, function, pretty much the same functionality you saw in, in, the, in the map hex version. Um, in ArcView, we, we have a, a couple of toolbars. We have a, a GeoEnviron toolbar, an extension that, that sits in, in ArcView um, and basically allows you to do all of the things that I, I, I just did um, in in the map X there. Um, so, for example, in ArcView, you know, one of the things you might find is that you know when you're trying to draw polygons, just a simple thing of adding sites into your into your into your map can be complicated in ArcView. So we we've actually sort of simplified that process. If you want to draw a new site record, you just click on the little pencil tool, and then you can basically it, it puts this, the the layer into editable mode, and um, you can then basically draw your your record. So if I want to create a new site record here, um, I can just do that. So it's PCL 158. So that's my record there, and there is created in the database, and I can go in and populate the information about that record. Um, if I, if I wanted to, I could have done it the way I showed you earlier um, by just using the, the advanced option. Um, if I just click on that, for example, there, and just go like that and say use advanced, then I could, I could fill out all the details about the prioritization and all the rest of it as well um, here if I, if I wanted to. Um, okay, I'll just leave that. Okay, so that's created, created the record there. Um, and again, you have you have for, for the report writing, you've got the same facilities in ArcView. Um, essentially, you've got the, a, a Map Eagle uh, toolbar, which allows you to, to run reports and, and generate those uh, buffer search reports. Okay, now we're we're, we're just uh, we've only got five minutes left, so uh, so basically just to, just to give you the option of um, being able to ask a few questions. Um, has, has anybody got any questions? I don't think there are any outstanding at the moment. Um, okay, but, I mean, please feel free to to, to get in, in touch if you um, you know if you if you would like to get some more information about the software. Um, okay, I can see we've got a question come through. Uh, we already have many databases within our view within ArcGIS. Could these be imported? Good question, thank you. Um, one of the things we do uh, as part of the setup process is we basically take all your information, 
bring it all together and import it into the system so that it's essentially it's ready for you to, to go. Um, uh, we recently just done done a job for um, for, for a district council, uh, Selby District Council up in Yorkshire. Um, they over the years, as it, as 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 happens, you know, different officers had come into post, created their own sort of versions of information, and, and they had you know basically I think they had an access database and three Excel spreadsheets. All referencing the same information, and um, and of course that you know that that's 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 just um, that's just going to create havoc when uh, when somebody wants to 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 actually get some factual information about a location. So we we put all that information together, and um, actually last week I was with them training them and uh, delivered the the system to to them. So they're they're, they're very happy. Um, but yeah, so we can we can certainly. Um, as part of the service that is standard, we, we take your all your data, bring it into the system, populate it, get the in, get the system installed. We'll liaise with with your IT department, get get all of that sorted out, and then a two day training session, teach you how to use the system, and and basically you're you're ready to go then. Okay. Um, actually, there's another question. Uh, will you be providing a download of the webinar? Certainly can. Yes, uh, I, I have recorded the webinar, so um, so we'll we'll send you all a link uh, to to have a look at it. Great. Any 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 other questions there? As I say, please feel free to to get in touch um, if if uh, you, you have any specific questions that come to mind after after the webinar, or indeed if if you if you would be interested in you know ha having a closer look, you know we're happy to come down to your offices and you know sp you know spend a couple of hours with you and, and go through the nitty gritty, have a look at your data, see see what needs to be done to it. Okay. Thanks very much for attending. Um, it's been a, been a pleasure, um, and yeah, look forward to hearing from some of you soon. Thank you.